No, of course, it's not advancing. Oh, there it is at the base. So I thought it'd be worth showing a timeline for the outbreak, uh, just to remind us all of how accelerated this process has, be, has become. Um, I was in China at the very end of January because I wanted to see specifically uh, what the challenges were. And I returned um, you know, with a lot of insights. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get off the ground as rapidly as we should have nationally, uh, but that's, that's not news to anyone on the call. Uh, as many of you are aware, uh, when I came back, I was put into isolation. Ironically, uh, I became ill in New York, not in, not in China. But um, um, I think everybody is now up to warp speed here and elsewhere. We've tried to develop uh, more sensitive multiplex PCR assays that we think are capable of uh, being more efficient. Uh, this is one assay which has now been uh, approved by the FDA. We have another that simultaneously looks at influenza as well as uh, SARS-CoV-2. And um, we're in the process of trying to gear this up so they can be used on larger instruments. We've purchased three additional ABIs that are ready for use so that we can support clinical uh, studies without uh, compromising what's necessary for clinical care. And much of what we've done to date has been to try to support that work that's being done in, in clinical sites. We obtained funding from Amazon for whom I was doing a lot of consulting. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a fairly large uh, donation and we've proposed four phase two clinical trials that are being, uh, that are nearly through the FDA at present. Uh, and this work is led by PIs in the Department of Medicine, not by our group. We provide laboratory support and funding and you can see the four trials there, one in critically ill subjects that I'll describe a little bit more in a moment. Healthcare workers for present, we don't have a PI. We had one, but uh, she's been pulled away. And then for close contacts who either are infected or not infected by NPA swab analysis. This is the project that's led by Max O'Donnell. Um, he's got 50 cases and he's got uh, 100 cases 50 will receive convalescent plasma, 50 will receive controls. All of the control plasma, all of the protocols we've established were based on the protocol that was built by Johns Hopkins, largely by, uh, Schlo by uh, Schmuel and, and Arturo, because we want to ensure that whatever it is they find will be able to integrate with their analyses. Uh, in addition to this study uh, led by Max, we have another one led by Jessica Justman, which looks at uh, positive close contacts. Another also led by Jessica, which is in individuals who are uninfected, also close contacts. Uh, the endpoints uh, follow those that were set up by uh, the Hopkins group. And then we have this one in hospital workers that was supposed to be directed by Lizzie uh, Elsner, but she's uh, fully occupied now in the in the clinic uh, and we need a PI to lead this one. I have no experience in clinical trials. If anybody is interested in doing this, um, it is almost through review. Uh, please be in touch with me ASAP because we're trying to get this done within the next few days. We have a drug repurposing uh, program where we're supporting Jing Yuzhu who will be talking at the end of the hour. Uh, we're looking initially at three drugs, and here the idea is simply that we're providing him with um, a cell culture system in which he can test the efficacy of those drugs. We're doing something similar for David Brenner, who's testing for UVC irradiation, looking at plastic, steel, paper, and cloth. This stems from work that was done by um, Vincent Munster at RML, where he looked at the time course for decay of virus on those surfaces. And I think that this, uh, this is extremely important work, although it's a little out of what we typically do. We are focused on trying to develop new and better serological assays. Uh, these are microarrays that we've used previously for tick-borne illnesses, Zika for AFM, and other disorders where we can map using linear peptides that span the proteome of all the viruses of interest and then give us very discrete data uh, that we can then use to expand uh, the armamentarium. 
The caveat, of course, is that these are linear, uh, so we don't have the capacity to detect conformational determinants. But from a diagnostic standpoint, and if used in combination, uh, there are insights that may be important for function as well. This describes the size of this chip. So you can see we can look at 172,000 individual peptides simultaneously. You can label for IgG and IgM. Uh, and what's nice about this approach is that once you've completed a discovery process, you can put them onto any platform you like from Luminex to, uh, to lateral flow. Ian, you're at uh, your time limit, but uh, you know, if you can wrap okay, it up. Okay, I, I will wrap very quickly. So uh, this is a list of subjects that we studied in Guangzhou in collaboration with Zhu, uh, with Professor Liu there. Um, this shows you the sort of data that you get. We're just representing three regions, nucleoprotein, glycoprotein, and, and uh, surface glycoprotein. You can see that you can differentiate these two populations very nicely. Uh, and there's a time course experiment here that shows you that the epitopes come up differently in acute versus chronic disease, which follows up on what David was saying earlier about the fact that, you know, you don't have responses as early as you might like. And I'll just close by saying that, you know, this is not going to be the last infectious outbreak that we'll encounter. And it's important to be, you know, positioned so that when the next one comes around, We'll have an immune system that will allow us to do this. CII, ICAP, and others are active around the world. The last thing I'll say is that we're focusing a lot on public service announcements and way in which we can reinforce uh, what the federal government is trying to do about controlling this. And this is a uh, public service announcement that was released on the Mailman School of Public Health website with the cast of Contagion. And if you want to inform your family and friends, it's useful. And uh, it's necessary to do this public media. This is how I became infected myself. Um, and we have to engage not only with mainstream media, but also some that are a little more uh, outside of the mainstream for those of us who work in the university like Fox and Mehmet Oz and others. And I'll close there, thanks. Thank you, Ian. Um, people want to raise their hands. Uh, I see Virginia again. Virginia, you should be able to talk. Hi, Ian. This is uh, Virginia from Chemistry and Systems Biology. We have worked with you in the past on a living yeast biosensor that we engineered with synthetic biology. And we're currently adapting it uh, for the coronavirus, and we'd like to get in touch with you about that. Um, we are taking, uh, taking as many requests as we can, as rapidly as we can. I think we're queued up so far for at least the next week, uh, but there should be some openings thereafter. What, do you have an assistant that I should go through? Yeah, it's um, my, uh, my twin brother, Ian Lipkin, just write him and he'll, he'll respond. Excellent, okay, thanks so much, bye. Andrea? Any other question? Go ahead. A role here. Yes. Yes, so uh, Ian. So uh, I've read in the news that there was a drug that was approved in China, this uh, Fivalovir or something like that. Do you have any news or do you know if, uh, how does it work? If, if, uh, if you send me uh, the information, I'll reach out to uh, Chen Zhu and others and see what I can do. If there are any clinical trialists in the audience and you're interested in doing something in hospital workers in conjunction with Max O'Donnell, please be in touch with me because we need to fill that position. It's extremely important. 